Hi, this is YDN Multimedia. Uh, my name is Cody Pomerantz, and we're here today uh, for the Everybody Has a Story weekly segment. Um, and today, we're joined by Sean Smith, uh, who is the current uh, DUS of the Global Affairs major, uh, and I understand a Senior Vice President of Crisis Communications at the consulting firm uh, for Porter Novelli. Um, Mr. S uh, Professor Smith has an extensive resume um, in foreign affairs and national security, uh, and he was previously the Assistant Secretary for, for Public Affairs at the Department of Homeland Security and has in the past uh, worked for the Obama campaign. Um, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So uh, there's a couple questions I think I want to talk to you about. Uh, um, first, about your background in communications um, and some of the things you you've done for the campaign for DHS and, and now for Porto Novelli. Um, and then maybe we can shift into a couple questions about the world at large and, and, and what's going on um, and what President Obama has to confront in the next term. So, Sounds good. great. Awesome. Um, so my first question uh, is, you were at the Department of Homeland Security, you oversaw uh, several, you know, major organizations, you know, FEMA, uh, the Secret Service, the TSA, uh, and I understand you were there during the BP oil spill. Can you talk about what that was like in, in terms of, you know, you're, now you're the Senior Vice President of Crisis Communications at, at Port Valley. What is Crisis Communications? What's the first step when something like that happens? Yeah, Crisis Communications is serving at the Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> Uh, which is why I have uh, now uh, migrated into the title and the position that I have in the, in the private sector is the experiences that I had at DHS uh, really prepared me to uh, give counsel to uh, clients, corporate, private sector side, um, about how to uh, protect their reputation in an era of, of social media. Uh, because the game is is changed dramatically uh, from how it used to be practiced, and 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 we sort of felt like we wrote the book uh, on on how to respond uh, and how to how to work through crises uh, when we were at DHS uh, because we were uh, on the receiving end of breaking news every day, uh, all day long. Uh, there were days when the front page, top of the fold of the New York Times were all stories that we had been involved in uh, at DHS, whether it was on immigration uh, or, or terrorism uh, or a natural disaster, and as you said, the BP oil spill, which went on for four and a half months in the summer of uh, 2010 and dominated uh, news coverage uh, for, for that entire period. Uh, and um, DHS uh, has a responsibility to oversee uh, and, to be, and to coordinate uh, the response for the federal government, even on communications. Uh, and so my role was to lead the administration's response uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the crisis, to the spill, uh, and to try and tell the story of the, of the response. I mean, the administration mounted an historic response uh, to that crisis. Uh, over 7,000 uh, boats were on the water, over 40,000 individuals were responding at, at, at the peak. And what we wanted to do was tell that story for the sake of the people who lived in the region so that they knew that their government was doing everything in its power to, to respond and to mitigate the, the event. And also to, to protect the president's reputation politically uh, because uh, these are the kinds of events that can really um, uh, stress the reputation of, of the president uh, and or a governor at the state level or a mayor at the local level because the public expects them to, to be in charge. Was when you heard about it was uh, was there as much urgency um, at, at you know at the first time you heard that there's there's oil spilling in the Gulf uh, did people think that it would that it would turn into such um, a big crisis at the beginning? They knew that it could. Uh, the first email that I got was in the middle of the night, uh, as many of them came in during my time at DHS, uh, and that there had been an explosion uh, on an oil rig uh, off the coast of Louisiana, and 11 people were, were missing. Uh, and um, 
the the threat of, of a prolonged spill uh, was mentioned you know, in the earliest um, in the earliest moments. Uh, when I got into work that morning, I got called into the Secretary of Homeland Security, my boss's office, uh, Secretary Napolitano, who said this could turn into to be a big problem. We're going to start organizing. Uh, there was a meeting within a day, I think, maybe two days, uh, in the Oval Office where the President was briefed by by his cabinet officials, who whose departments had responsibility uh, on this. Uh, and he ordered that uh, every resource of the federal government be put um, put to uh, put 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 in place uh, to respond to this and to be brought to bear. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we did that. And and weeks and months later, when uh, when people questioned the the president's or the administration's um, uh, speed uh, and. Uh, uh, alacrity to the response, we were able to point back to that early Oval Office meeting and the President's directive, which, which we did put out a, a, a statement and a press release on that, that day. And so we, we had something in the public record that said we were on this from, from day one. And, and ultimately, you know, this was a success story for the President because when the spill was uh, over and uh, in the late summer, um, there were public polls that showed that the public's uh, support for the president's handling of the response were uh, were o o overall favorable um, versus BPs, uh, which were uh, very unfavorable and continue to be viewed unfavorably now uh, to over two years later. They're so paying out a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, they're paying for it. Yeah. Now uh, uh, you talked about shifting, you know, from the public sector to the to the private sector. Uh, with Porto Novelli, uh, when you're dealing with a crisis for a government versus a you know private business, is there what are the different priorities? What uh, what are the major differences um, in in dealing with those two different? Well, entities? one thing is the same, which is that um, that your reputation, um, whether you're a public official or whether you're a corporate entity, um, your reputation is the most uh, prized asset and the most important asset that you have. And when trust is eroded uh, in, in you and your organization, uh, then it will affect everything. And the VP is a great example of that. Um, and so it, it is an important, um, crucial part of any company's um, ongoing business strategy is to protect their reputation. What, one of the things I would say that is different uh, is the uh, expectation of disclosure. Uh, you know, when you're in government, especially um, the public, you you are the you are the public you are the public servants, uh, and um, and because of Freedom of Information Act uh, uh, requirements, that the you are actually required by law to disclose uh, information, and it's just a good idea to err on the side of disclosure when you're in public office uh, because. Um, uh, because again, the public has an expectation for that, uh, and, and the press is covering you on a day to day, hour to hour, minute by minute basis. Uh, and there's this notion that when you're withholding information, that you're doing so because you're trying to cover something up. Um, so the, there is a there is a default for disclosure, I think, in in public life that isn't necessarily there in every circumstance in the private sector. But I think. I think many organizations are, are coming to the realization that there is, there is tremendous value in being forthcoming and, and, and disclosing more and more. Um, uh, but they are governed under a different set of rules and public companies have, have, uh, have SEC regulations and other obligations to their shareholders that complicate uh, that in some cases. Now. You're the current uh, uh, director of undergraduate studies for the Glo global affairs major, um, which is a very new major. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, this is kind of a couple questions in one. Where do you see the, uh, what do you want the future of the global affairs major to be here? What do you want the role of the Jackson Institute to be? And I know you, you're working a lot with the Capstone Project. Yeah. Um, and can you talk about how that's coming along? And lastly, how do you respond to, to some people's criticism that 
a major like global affairs and an institute like the Jackson Institute is not uh, um, supposed to be in a place like Yale. That, that, that they say Yale is more theoretical, it's, it's not supposed to be practical um, like we've made this global affairs major to be. Yeah, well, um, I think that, uh, that that's sort of a false uh, choice that, that, that people are being confronted with um, because, you know, what the Jackson Institute does, what the major does, and what the, what the master's program does is, is to combine the, the, um, the best aspects of, of academia uh, and, um, uh, and, and research um, by, by the best you know, academics uh, in the country in these fields along with some aspects of, of applied learning uh, and, and ben benefiting from the voices of practitioners who have been uh, in the field uh, for years uh, on these areas and have something to offer uh, folks like General McChrystal and, and others, for example. Um, but I think that, the, that that's exactly where the major uh, is going, where the, where the Jackson Institute um, is going, which is to continue to be, A, the home uh, for students who are interested in being global citizens and being global leaders uh, when they move out of, out of Yale into, into their careers, um, and also to be a place where they will be able to uh, learn from practitioners, learn from their classmates, uh, and be in a setting where uh, those global experiences are, are really valued. Uh, and the capstone classes are, are a, a great exclamation point to their uh, time in the major. So um, it is the senior requirement uh, for, for this major to complete a capstone class. And what that means is students end up in a, in a, in a seminar kind of class uh, the fall semester of their senior year where there's eight to ten students maximum and they complete a semester long project research and policy project uh, on behalf of the of a partner organization and uh, for instance one of the ones that we're completing uh, this this fall and this semester right now is uh, one that I'm teaching where the client is the United States Treasury Department and the office uh, specifically within Treasury who has responsibility for implementing economic sanctions when the United States puts sanctions on, on another country. And this, is, this is not a simulation. This, this is, is not they a simulation. Are the real. This is a, uh, this is a real uh, exercise. Uh, and they asked us uh, and they asked our, our, our 10 students to um, do a sanctions impact analysis. Uh, specifically looking at Libya and Burma as case studies. And our students uh, went to Treasury at the start of the semester and got a day and a half of briefings from uh, senior officials at Treasury and at State Department from the White House. Uh, they've spent the last 13 weeks uh, digging into to these questions, uh, doing a, a tremendous amount of uh, original research and doing a tremendous amount of analysis. Um, and they, they, in fact, are uh, presenting to the Undersecretary uh, of Treasury um, this afternoon uh, their findings uh, over a video teleconference um, yeah, as well as some of the other senior members, uh, uh, senior officials at Treasury who have responsibility for, uh, for economic sanctions uh, and they will deliver a 50 plus page report uh, this afternoon after their presentation and they will have really contributed something that will find its way into the policy making process uh, for the United States and that is a tremendous opportunity uh, for, for these students and it's a tremendous benefit for, for the Treasury Department and for the other uh, capstone clients uh, that, that we have uh, this semester and the ones that we will have in the future. So um, I think it's a, it's a tremendous program and something I'm, I'm really pleased to, to be a part of.